Take a look at these puppies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm in love. I don't care if you don't think it's funny, it is funny. <laughs> Spring has sprung and so have the fleas and ticks and parasites. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Joining us now <laughs> is Andrea Arden with Spring Safety Tips for our furry friends. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, we, make it, we make it sound so fun, don't we? But it really is fun, like pet ownership. You just have to make sure that you protect them from little bugs and critters that yeah. springtime brings. Yeah, I mean, there's issues throughout the year and things that we need to consider as pet parents. And during the spring, one of the things we need to think about is making sure we keep our pets well-groomed. And the reason for that is because if a dog like the puppy you have gets yes. mats in its coat, it means that its body is not as easily able to regulate itself oh. in regards to the temperature. And okay. also, it makes it harder to be able to um, identify parasites on their body. But what's the best mm -hmm. way to prevent fleas and ticks? Well, the first thing you need to do, again, is grooming. The second thing is you can actually just do a check with your hands, sort of like you're doing over here. And then the third thing you want to do is you want to um. get a flea and tick comb. So this is for you. Okay. Yeah. This is for you. And after you take your puppy for a oh, I know. Moms, this is also known as a lice comb. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is great. So it shows the little flea. Well, the reason on. they don't like this. They the don't reason like to be do they? The reason it's so useful is because you can see that the combs are very, very small. Yeah. So it will snag on any ticks. Um, and then also when you pull it off, if there are fleas, if you tap this on a paper towel, you'll see if any little black drops come off, and that's flea poop. So, oh, really? Yes. Yes. Little one. So yeah. If they, so if we find flea poop, that means there are fleas. Yes. Um, so what do we do if we find fleas or ticks? Yes. Um, well, you want to talk to your veterinarian because depending on your dog's health and their age, like these little guys are only about eight weeks old, um, that it varies what your your vet will prescribe in regards to a preventative or treatment. Um, and so there's over-the-counter stuff that can help potentially, but really, ultimately, you need to go to your vet to get a prescription. Are they siblings? Because they're like talking to they each other are. right now. Yeah. You know what? Actually, they want to do. They want to go play with the two Aussies that are up for adoption. Oh, well, let's. Oh, I think we they let them, we let them play. play? We, well, we can see what happens. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, do ticks? Yeah. Um, do all ticks? I just want to know. Do all ticks carry Lyme disease? Because I know that's a concern for a lot of people. They don't. All ticks don't. Um, okay. It's typically deer ticks. Uh -huh. um, and I think we have a photo, actually, if we want to show that. Um, okay. And on, on the Which one left, is Which one? Yeah. they're both deer ticks. One is actually a male, one's a female. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and when they're engorged, they're very easy to find, but when they're, that's an engorged one. Oh, but awesome. when they're, oh my goodness. When they're not engorged, they're not so easy to find, and that's why we use these little combs. And, and so those are the ones that carry the Lyme's disease. Yes. But just because you find a deer tick doesn't mean you will get Lyme's disease. Is no, that and that's where actually a blood test has to be done. And I have Lyme disease, just so you know. I like to reveal yeah. things on this show. I know you Last do. Time, yeah. Last time you told us you were single. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now we find out yes. you have Lyme yeah. disease. So um, while it's certainly a serious issue and it's mm -hmm. something for our pets that also is potentially serious, um, it is treatable. And what's important is catching it as early as possible mm -hmm. because that early treatment will prevent right. future problems. I get it. I what about allergies? So allergies can be more, um, animals can be more prone to allergies during the warm weather. So you want to make sure that you check their paws if the coloration on the bottom is changing in between their feet. So you guys can look in between their feet. If you start to see it's getting a little red or if it's a little bit moist, you need to make sure you keep that clean and dry. Uh -huh. And one of the things you want to do, especially in the warmer weather, yeah. and you guys are each going to take one of these, okay. is you want to pay special attention to their ears. And the reason for that yeah, is because you. as the weather gets warmer, and it's more humid, yeah. they're more likely to develop what's called a yeast infection. Oh. So you just take something like this. Do not use a Q-tip. Yeah. First thing you do is you want to look for the color. Second thing, see if you smell yeast. Yeah, what, give it a sniff. Yeah. Oh, it's puppy smell. <laughs> they're just puppy smell. smell, yeah. But if oh. you smell yeast, you want to talk to your vet. They'll give you a treatment for it. Uh, but you mean like yeast like bread or yeast like, what does yeast smell like? I, I honestly don't, forgive me. Do describe it? I don't know what it's cheesy. cheesy. Yeah, kind of okay. cheesy. It has a very distinct smell. Yeah. Okay. Stinky. Yeah. Stinky. Stinky, not, yeah. not yeah. right. Yeah, so yes. the other thing you want to do, and it's super easy in addition to uh -huh. cleaning, so you guys go ahead and clean their ears very okay. gently, uh -huh. is when you're hanging out with your pet on the couch, just lift up their ears, let a little bit of air get in there. Oh. Because that circulation uh -huh. of the air helps to prevent yeast infections. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. All right. 
There we um, go. So should all dogs be microchipped? Because I know some people think yes, yeah, some people think no. I all mine are microchipped, yeah, mine's just in case. So you know, it's it's not as controversial as it used to be. One mm -hmm. of the things that is for sure is that all pets should have an ID tag on them. Even these guys do. They're up for adoption, but they already have their little ID tags, which the number will change once they find their forever families. Mm -hmm. But um, a microchip is a good option to discuss with your vet because if the collar falls off, then the ID does as well. Right. Andrea, let me ask you this question: Should we microchip our children? <laughs> <laughs> Just to keep an eye, you know, yeah. that teenage. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Why not? I mean, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I say. Listen, we have to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to tell you how to avoid a rough ride <laughs> when you're traveling with your dog. Stick around. If it's one thing I'm a big uh, proponent of, it's uh, traveling across country with your girlfriends and your dogs. And uh, Andrea, you're going to tell us some of the things that are yeses and noes for traveling. Uh, how do we travel with dogs? My friend's dog likes to throw up in the car. <laughs> Well, that's not a good way to travel. The first thing is what you guys are doing up front is a no-no. Um, we really don't want dogs loose on our laps. And the reason is, for the same reason we don't want children loose, or ourselves. Um, if we get into an accident, or if we even do it just a short stop, they can get hurt, and they can actually hurt people in the car as well. Okay. So you either want to use a seat belt designed specifically for, for dogs, uh -oh. which has a, a loop that you can secure to the seat belt in the car. Okay. The other option is that they can be in some sort of a carry bag or a crate. Do you know so that they're secured. Our dog Chewy okay. does not like to travel without being in the crate. Even when we oh, try yeah? to like attach her with a seat belt, she prefers her crate. She feels most comfortable there. Well, you know, for Aww. some dogs, you know, you see dogs who pace back and forth in the back of the car because they're nervous. Mm -hmm. Sometimes making them have a more secure spot makes the ride itself more secure for them and easier mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what about like calming products like for dogs? What, I've seen a lot of different calming products. Yeah, so I'm a really big fan of um, here, here, Kelly. <laughs> <I'm really sorry. laughs> it's a um, okay, focus. It is. It's a it's a dog appeasing pheromone that's in it that helps to calm them. Oh. Um, it's safe for them. It can be very effective with some dogs. It's you calming. Just, it's, it's calming. calming. There you go. <laughs> one of the best things people can do is to make sure that instead of taking their pets on that one ride, you know, a month or a year to the uh -huh. veterinarian or the groomer, which is typically not their favorite place to go. Right. It traumatizes. Yeah, yeah, you can take them on, with, exactly, like, right. little rides to mm -hmm. places they like, whether it be the um, the park or somewhere else fun. Um, this is really always fun. Um, we, we just want to give the viewers at home an update, Andrea. Are you still single? Yes, I am. <laughs> In fact, yes, I am. Thank you for bringing that up. So um, all of these dogs and Andrea are up for adoption. <laughs> I'm going to put that out, out there, right? And uh, so...